Video game graphics can pull you into a game. They can make you become immersed into the world of the game that you're playing. They can be very divisive. Uh, when a new console generation comes out, fanboys from either sides of the fence argue over which console has the best graphics or which new game for the new console has the best graphics. Of course, PC gamers all believe that all of their games look the best because if they have a powerful PC, they can crank the settings up higher than a console can go. Right now, we are very fortunate in the world of gaming with the quality of the games that are being put out and the quality of the graphics that are being generated. We're going to take a look at 10 of the best PC graphics games in 2024. Now, a lot of these games are also on console, but the footage shown will all be from uh, PC, from gaming PC. So, this list is going to be my personal uh, opinion. It's not going to be the final end-all be-all of what has the best graphics. You could say art, this art style is more important than graphics and a lot of people would agree with that. A good art style can make up for a lack of visual fidelity. Some games are intentionally made with a very unique art style so that they never age. They never look old because they weren't going for realistic graphics in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at 10 of the best graphics presentations in gaming on the PC in 2024. One thing that we won't be doing is judging the quality of the games themselves. This is strictly about visuals. Now, there are going to be games that I will have, you know, a thing or two to say about, oh, it's a fantastic game, you should give it a try. But this is not a review of any of these games. Uh, some of these games are not that new. Some of them are extremely new to the point that I have not completed them and I don't know exactly how they end and things uh, along those lines. So this would not be a review of said games. This will simply be visual presentation and showing what they look like, why I believe they belong on this list, and possibly why you should play them. If you're like me and you will purchase a game strictly based on visual presentation, which I have done many, many times, games that I'm not even that interested in playing, I will actually put my hard-earned money into just so I can explore a world that's full of absolutely stunning visuals and of course if that's the case the game doesn't keep me entertained then I won't stick with it but I will play games just for the visual presentation so I hope you guys uh, enjoy this and I hope it you will get down in the comments and tell me which ones I left off the list that I need to take another look at or let me know which ones you think should be number one or number five or whatever. Uh, I hope you enjoy the process of going through these and I hope that uh, it can be something that we can build upon going forward. So some of the games that I'm showing here, actually all of the games that have been shown so far are not on this top 10 list. So all of this is just showing beautiful visuals from different games, but none of them are actually part of this top 10. So this is just to kind of have some eye candy while we lay out the rules for for the display that we're about to do. So let's go ahead and get started and hope you guys enjoy. Number 10, Battlefield 2042. Battlefield has been around for quite some time, but I think it was Battlefield 3 that first really brought them onto the scene as a visual powerhouse. The studio that creates these games, uh, controversial as they may be, being part of EA. EA is not always the most beloved company in the world, but they put a ton of effort into these games. The visual quality, the scale of everything, the destructibility... It's just, it's really impressive. 
Battlefield 2042 was a little bit of a question mark because it was the first Battlefield game that wouldn't have a single player campaign. And we know in years past with Battlefield 3 and 4 and uh, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, it was always the single player campaign that they used to showcase their amazing visuals using whatever uh, proprietary engine they were using at that time. Now with this Battlefield, we knew it would look good just, you know, coming from that developer, but I personally had questions about what it would look like being multiplayer only. Would they focus less on visuals and more on multiplayer components of the game? But I'm very happy to uh, see that they put a ton of work into the visuals for this game. The effects, the cin the cinematic feel of everything, when things explode, when vehicles explode, the the scene that's created all the sparks and fire and smoke and everything looks as good as just about any game out there <clears throat> the maps of course being a battlefield game are absolutely massive and this one is probably the biggest maps they've ever made in one of their games 128 player count uh, large scale battles and you know the it's it's not meant to be a simulation battlefield has never i don't think ever really gone for simulation but they they give you such a mix of different styles of combat different styles of gameplay and things that are going on uh, whether it's air to air air to ground and it all looks and feels really really great now this is not when you get in a a jet or a helicopter in Battlefield 2042 you're not gonna feel like you're in a flight sim by any means they're very simplified controls but just the the scale of the maps that you can get in the the differences just from one side of a map to the other this particular map that's being shown right now has a huge valley on the left side of the map that's hundreds and hundreds of feet down off of a cliff there's bases down in that valley then you have the mountainous region uh, to the right over here which is where we're headed and you can see the rocks and the grass and all the trees and everything they're all reactionary everything reacts to explosions or gunfire or fire grenades or uh, vehicles coming into contact with them you know everything in the world is reactionary and extremely detailed one of the things that I love about this game and you know it was pretty rough at launch when it first launched it was really really um, uh, in a bad state uh, performance wise it was in a really bad state as far as the gameplay features and just it was a really disappointing launch for what you know was a pretty hyped up game battlefield anytime a new battlefield comes out it's a pretty big deal and for it to be such a disappointing launch uh really made people kind of turn on it and a lot of people refunded it after purchasing it and then <clears throat> a lot of people left the game entirely but now the player counts are huge there's tons of people playing it every day it's been revamped the combat system is the weapon system class system has been revamped some of the game modes have been revamped and adjusted and i am happy to say that it is very much a contender for one of the best battlefield games that they've ever made Number 9, Ready or Not. Ready or Not is arguably the best tactical shooter on the market right now. If it's not the best, it is certainly one of the best. It's going for a hyper-realistic graphic style. The art style is uh, really, really good. The way that they made the environment so believable. Uh, everything in the world feels touched and real and occupied when you enter a house or an office building. Everything feels real and lived in. Um, Ready or Not's maybe not the game you would expect to see on a top 10 graphics list. Not a lot of people are going to go around 
telling you it has the best graphics and it's it's not number one on this list by any means uh, for some some particular reasons one of those reasons being the uh, <clears throat> the lack of detail on certain NPC characters at times, although they do look good, uh, the officers look really, really good. Civilians at times can be a little bit lower quality than the officers are. Um, the action in Ready or Not is really really good and the visuals add to that because at times it can be so realistic looking and so immersive that you kind of forget that you're playing a video game um, I won't say that it's the best looking game that you have ever played but what I will say about ready or not is it's something something that's hard to explain when you play it for a while when you've played a, a decent amount of ready or not and you move on to other games or you fire up another game um, there's this feeling of oh this is a video game something about ready or not it has the environments are so detailed and so they're trying so hard to be like I said like a hyper realistic uh, representation of the locations and when you play ready or not the the levels that you play in they're so varied there's so many of them they're they're extremely different from one to the next some will be in a in a residential home. Others will be in office buildings. Others will be in a. Uh, there's one that's a. A dance club. There's one that's a college. Uh, there's one map that is, um, a car dealership, and it's, like even the little back offices where they where they do the, the sales and everything and paperwork and everything and the dealership is realistically there. Everything that you would expect to see in that setting is there and uh, it's just it's a really really great shooter it's really something that if you haven't tried uh, and you enjoy um, team teamwork whether it's single player with the AI who have been recently uh, greatly improved with the release of 1.0 uh, the AI was greatly improved there but if you want to play with your friends, this game is even better with, with other players. If you get a team, three to five guys, and you guys can go bust down doors and um, clear rooms and everything together, there's I've done a lot of fun <clears throat> co-op video game experiences in the over the years, but this one is probably about as good as it gets. So, as you can see, the the detail in the worlds and the levels that are created here are kind of the star of the game. I mean the the gun visuals are incredible. The world visuals are really really good. Just little things, you know, notes sitting on the desk and handwritten notes hanging on the wall. Uh, something stuck to the refrigerator like you would see in somebody's house. Dirty laundry on the floor in the corner. Um, so many little details that are in this game that they put into the world building that you you know most games overlook that level of of detail they don't put the time in or uh, they're too focused on other things to to do that that way and uh, the other thing ready or not gets really really uh, good marks for is the lighting quality there are missions that are completely dark where you have to use night vision the night vision is incredible in this game uh, the visual fidelity I don't think I have any footage of night vision but the visual fidelity of the night vision is really really good and overall just the whole package on display is really top-notch with ready or not it's a game that if you haven't tried and you're a PC player I definitely recommend you give this game a shot the 1.0 the full game release just happened and it is really 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 good and uh, arguably like I said the best tactical shooter on the market right now in 2024 Number 8, DCS World, or Digital Combat Simulator. What can you say about DCS? For the people who have played DCS, um, 
the people who are unbelievably addicted to DCS, the people who are helplessly prisoners to DCS. Um, it is a game that threatens to take over all of your free time. Uh, if you're the per kind of person like me who plays a lot of different types of games and enjoys all different types of gaming, DCS is definitely a threat to that because it is the type of game that learning one aircraft in DCS literally takes years. I mean, you're learning the systems and everything from a real aircraft. And it's probably the hardest barrier to entry of any game I've ever experienced. Uh, just to learn how to arm your aircraft, start your aircraft, get in the air. And that's not even killing anything. Not even engaging in combat. Just, just learning how to work the radar in an F-18 or an F-16 takes unbelievable amount of time and study and research and watching YouTube videos and reading uh, about it and talking to people who have done it and anyway uh, <clears throat> the visuals in DCS are incredible and that's what we're here for we're here for the visuals it is certainly a game that is one of the best looking games in the world and the crazy thing is it has been for years it was an incredible looking game when it first released years ago it's a very old game it's been around for a long long time but they have continued to upgrade and update the game so that it looks better and better and better and taking advantage of more modern uh, hardware graphics cards cpus memory everything they have found ways to stretch so much out of this game engine and add so much to it um, this past year they added DLSS they <clears throat> have added so many new things to it and they're adding more it's it's nowhere near finished they're working on it all the time it's not something that is just going to be over um, it's I don't know if this I, I remember when I first started flying in DCS, one of the first thing I asked was, when is DCS 2 coming out? And the people who had been around DCS for a long time just laughed at me. They're like, there is no DCS 2. This game will just continue to evolve forever. And considering it was the best looking game, one of the best looking games in the world years ago when it released versus now it's one of the best looking games in the world the only reason that this game is not higher up on the list of uh, the top 10 games is because there are older modules and older maps so older aircraft and older maps that are from much older versions of this game they've been in the game for nearly a decade and they're starting to show their age pretty badly um, DCS would be even higher up the top, my top 10 list, if it wasn't for those maps that were falling short of modern standards and some of the aircraft that are lower fidelity. But the ones that are higher fidelity, the ones that are more modern or have been updated to be more uh, to modern standards graphically and functionally, uh, they look as good as any any detailed models in any game you've ever seen. There's so much precision. Uh, you can look at every aircraft, every rivet, every screw, every little line in the in the hull of the aircraft, everything is there. Um, it's painstaking the amount of time that they have put into this game. And it's it's one of the most rewarding games you'll ever play as well because yes it's visually beautiful but it's the hardest game you'll ever play there's there's nothing else that really kind of compares to it but when you finally do get your first air-to-air -air kill or you take out a couple of tanks with an Apache helicopter or something like that it is truly truly rewarding and the modules uh, like this one here that we're looking at is a P-47 this is an F-16. The modules, the interior of the modules are completely detailed. Every switch, every button, everything is fully interactive in the cockpit and does what it would do in real life. Uh, the fidelity is just absolutely amazing. 
and for that it is one of the best looking games even now in 2024. Number 7, Forza Motorsport. Now this one might be a little bit divisive. Forza Motorsport is a truly fantastic looking game and if you have a strong enough computer to be able to crank up the settings on this game uh, it can be truly breathtaking if you love cars if you like collector cars or exotic cars especially if you like exotic cars this this game is just loaded with all kinds of exotic and awesome cars and you can customize them and you can paint them and you can design liveries for them and and the the extent to which you can do your car daydreams in this game is phenomenal the game looks incredible forza has always been a really good looking game going all the way back to the original forza on the original og xbox uh, for the time for the hardware that it was working with that game was really good looking and this newer modern forza is definitely pushing the limits of what we can do with ray tracing and some of the other lighting effects and, and things that are in the game. Like I said, it takes a pretty beefy computer to be able to crank these settings up. It's not something you can you can do if you're running a budget rig, most likely. But uh, <clears throat> the visual fidelity is incredible. The racing, I'm more of a hardcore sim racing kind of a guy, so I've played Forza ever since the original OG Forza years and years ago. I like Forza for what it is. I like customizing cars and doing uh, performance upgrades to my cars and visual upgrades to my cars. I enjoy that aspect of it, but I go into it knowing uh, it is not a full simulation. It's, it's trying to be. It's, it's somewhat going for some simulation type things, but it is certainly not... Uh, on the level of something like iRacing or AMS2 or Assetto Corsa Competizione or you know some of these really hardcore simulators it's not trying to be that it's trying to be somewhere between an arcade and a simulation it has simulation aspects but it's also got a very forgiving handling model works really really well on a controller as well as on a wheel so whatever setup you have, you can get some great enjoyment out of this game. It's really, really a good game. It's fun. I enjoy it when I just want to relax. When I just want to race and have a good time, I play Forza Motorsport. When I want to race and, and do more serious racing with full course cautions and you know equipment failures and stuff like that, then I get into something like AMS2 and I... You know stress myself out with the difficulty level of a full sim you know but this is this is a really beautiful game as you can see the visuals are stunning it's one of the better looking games from 2023 and here we are at the beginning of 2024 and it is still worthy of being in the top 10 list in 2024. number six the last of us part one now, The Last of Us, it's, it's an interesting game. They are going for a hyper-realism while at the same time maintaining almost a little bit of a cartoony look. It's hard to really put into words what they're doing with The Last of Us. It is an older game. It was remastered in part one uh, to show off... Uh, modern day visuals with what is one of the most classic games of all time I mean The Last of Us is absolutely a classic and it if you've never played it it is one of the best story games ever made the story is absolutely incredible even from the first 15 minutes of the story you would just be blown away with how raw it is and somewhat disturbing it is but just the emotions it's able to draw is truly incredible and even in modern by modern game standards where things are everything's open world now and everything's big and bombastic and everything else the last of us even with a linear <clears throat> game world like it has still stands up as a really impressive achievement 
and with part one they crank the graphics up to the max i mean it looks incredible they have lighting that is really really good reflections are amazing the textures on everything are really really good the character models for even even the one of the things i'll say about the last of us even the characters that are low level characters characters that are not main characters whether whether it be enemies or npcs that don't really have any uh effect on the game in any way they're just kind of background npcs even they look truly amazing and you see here when the when you go into the weapons workbench the amount of detail that they put into it the the quality of it is just really really good and i know you know playstation has only recently started bringing some of their games to pc and as pc gamers we are thrilled to death uh, i know personally i'm looking forward to a couple that haven't come to pc yet um one i'm really looking forward to in particular uh, is rumored to come out this year but the last of us is truly a marvel both in narrative ways and just visually <clears throat> the detail the level of graphics for this game adds to how punishing the game world is the enemies are extremely smart they're aggressive um the game is a very hard game if you've never played it it's extremely difficult if you have the difficulty turned up a little bit it's very difficult um very unforgiving and it makes sense for a game that is set in a post-apocalyptic world for it to be punishing you know something that that really that really <clears throat> challenges you as a player and the amazing visuals from part one the remake is just so beautiful and it's so well done it truly even all these years later with this new touch-up it looks as good as most of the best looking games in the world number five cyberpunk 2077 now, Cyberpunk is another game like Battlefield 2042 that had a horrible, horrible launch window. The game was so massively hyped coming from the developers of The Witcher 3 and was the expectations were probably too high for, for pretty much any developer except maybe Rockstar to meet. Pretty bad. But truly incredible visuals even from the beginning there was a lot of bugs oh, in the wait, beginning just, and a lot wait. of graphical problems npcs and t poses and just all kinds of problems but we knew the game was incredible looking from the very beginning and they have completely Not turned 2077 around they have remade the whole I mean, game um, if you haven't played it but since launch or if you haven't played it since you know My in the last year around, you know water, version 2.0 added vehicle combat, added more realistic police responses, added tons of new gameplay features and abilities and perks for the skill tree, added so much to the game and it improved the visuals and the, the level of polish on everything. Um, I know the new huge DLC that they just came out with has got some of the best visuals of anything that came out last year in 2023 and it's just cyberpunk has always been great looking from some of the earliest trailers that we saw showing off the game and they did not disappoint with the final product here it was a buggy mess early in its lifespan no denying that can't really defend that but what i will say is the way that the game presents the world is um well for one it's extremely saturated Cyberpunk is a very saturated game. The colors are very bright, very uh, in your face. Um, the atmospherics are extremely in your face. Um, I personally don't love how CD Projekt Red has so much going on in the HUD on their games. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the screen at all times. And that in particular, I'm not very fond of. Um, but 
the visual fidelity is is really really good. And you can, of course you can turn the HUD off. You can turn all that stuff, <clears throat> you know, off one by one and, and only have what you want to be visible and, and so on. But uh, truly, truly one of the best looking games of the last several years, and it seems to be. You know, now now with mods, you can make it look even better. Which I, I don't have any graphics mods running in this. This is all vanilla. This is what the game looks like. Vanilla. Um, another thing that's really impressive about Cyberpunk is the fact that they chose to go fully first person. A lot of people, you know, The Witcher 3 was a third person game. A lot of people wanted a third person game. But the fact that they went first person exclusively throughout the entire game, there are no cutscenes in the game that aren't in first person. You experience every single thing in this game from beginning to end through the eyes of your character V. And at first it's a little jarring because, you know, we're used to video game cutscenes that that <clears throat> show our character and but once you get kind of immersed into this world and into the story that they're telling and you see everything from V's perspective it kind of draws you in in a way that some that a lot of other games fail to do it pulls you into the moment so much because you are V when you're playing the game you are V you see what V sees you see everything from his perspective or her perspective whichever you choose to play you can be male or female but it's truly one of the most immersive games and it takes to be that immersive it takes really good graphics now they're they're not by any means going for hyper realism here this is a very colorful game some of it is very realistic but a lot of it is over the top and sure intentionally down. over the top Breathe. but it is, is it is, is already heading on really 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 visually stunning if you have a really powerful PC, you can crank up the ray tracing and the path tracing. Uh, the path tracing is incredible. And just the whole game just kind of sucks you in. This first time playing the story, I couldn't put it down because of that level of immersion that it brought. So if you haven't given it a try after 2.0, it is definitely a game that you have to give a try. I don't need to be consoled. Number four, Alan Wake 2. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When it comes to video games, I'm a coward. I guess there's really no other way to put it. Scary games are just not for me. I don't handle horror games well at all. I have owned so many Resident Evil games and never even gotten halfway through any of them. Um, the only scary type game that I've ever been able to play for an extended period of time is Alien Isolation and Alien Isolation is terrifying in its own way but I don't handle scary stuff well so I didn't beat this game I did not play that far into this game it was creepy and unsettling but one thing I will say about Alan Wake 2 is it is visually stunning and it is also the hardest to run game I think I've ever experienced. My computer is a really good computer and this game brought it to its knees in a way <clears throat> not many games can. And uh, really really demanding. Some of the settings can be cranked up extremely high. The, the character models and the world detail is just unbelievable. From cutscenes to gameplay, there's almost no variations. Um, the game looks like a like a movie, like a CGI movie, the entire time you're playing it. It's very creepy. If you like well-told stories and you like scary things, you will love this game. It is incredible. The visuals are striking. They look so good. The characters look so good. The world is so detailed. Like I said, it's not for me, so I didn't get that far into it. I apologize. I don't have more better footage of it, and the people who are fans of this game are probably going to light me up in the comments for only have played the first little bit of it. But this is... The best thing I can say about it is it's 
one of the best looking games in 2023 and honestly one of the best looking games ever uh it's the only thing that keeps it from being higher on this list is it's a very um compared to something like an open world game it's a much simpler layout and much simpler gameplay and everything so it's not as demanding so it's not quite as impressive that the graphics are this good but still amazing visuals in this game number three microsoft flight simulator okay so microsoft flight simulator is not for everyone and i would be delusional to think that everybody would enjoy a game like microsoft flight simulator it is by most people's short modern day attention spans it is an extremely boring game you pick a location to take off from you pick a location to land and then you fly however many miles you have selected to fly um, if you are doing so uh, realistically you will be flying at thousands of feet um, one thing I will say about Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can see how stunning it is. The visuals are probably, honestly, if I'm being truly honest, Microsoft Flight Simulator might have the best visual. Like all these games that are at the top of this list, you could easily make an argument for any of them as being the best looking game in the world. Like you could easily make the argument that Microsoft Flight Simulator is the best looking game in the world and i don't think anybody could really argue that like could could deny that um the visuals will blow you away it's been around since 2020 uh somehow this game runs on consoles that just shows how powerful the new series x is that this game even runs on a console because it is very taxing for even the high powered pcs of the world um the visuals when well, you can be at thousands of feet and still see individual trees and houses and cars on the highways and everything i mean the visuals are truly as good as advertised if you have a pc strong enough to show it off um the aircraft when you're inside the cockpit you can zoom in on every single part of the cockpit every single switch and knob and everything else is completely realistic i mean it is hyper realism of the highest order there's very few games that go for hyper realism and nail it so well that they are still one of the best looking games in the world years after launch uh, there's not many games that can do that there are a few but there's not many that can launch and then years later still be arguably one of if not the best looking game in the world and flight sim is truly breathtaking even if you don't have a high-end pc if you love flying if you love being in the air and flying and you love airplanes i would recommend flight sim I'd go buy an xbox you can get a series x for four or five hundred dollars Go buy an Xbox so you can experience this game. That system runs it in full 4K. It's amazing looking on the Xbox. Uh, it's better on PC, of course, but on the Xbox it is still amazing. And for $500 to be able to play something of this high fidelity, there's really nothing that can beat that uh, in the world of gaming. So definitely check it out. Number two, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Um, this game actually surprised the heck out of me. I, uh, I don't know how to say it properly, but I am way more concerned with graphical fidelity and visuals than most people uh, would ever dream of being. And I'm also um, willing to buy games that are visually stunning, uh, whether I really care to play the game itself or not i will play them just for the graphics and things like that and i knew this game was really really good looking i had seen some things about it heard people talk about it and everything but when i went and got it <clears throat> and started playing it i actually bought it for this video because i knew it was one of the best looking games of 2023 what i did not expect was for it to be number two on this list i had no idea it was going to look this good 
Now there are things um, that that keep it from being number one on the list. Um, for example, NPCs, secondary NPCs, are lower quality. Um, the Navi, the big blue people, uh, when you find some of the secondary tier little mission givers and stuff just kind of scattered throughout the world, um, they're definitely a little disappointing. It reminds me a lot of, uh, 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 what is the game, the dinosaur robot game, Horizon Zero Dawn. The first Horizon, the the main characters were all phenomenal, super, super detailed, like next level. They were so, so good. And then all the secondary NPCs, the quality was so much lower. It was jarring. You'd be talking to them and they had very little facial expressions and their eyes were very dead looking. And it's kind of similar in this game. There's definitely NPCs and stuff that pull. You'll be, you'll be walking through what is arguably the best looking jungle you've ever seen in a video game and the world detail in this game is second to none i mean i'm a snob when it comes to graphics and i was completely blown away by the level of detail in the jungles and the forests and the swamps and everywhere else in this game um, it's a big massive game i was not able to get anywhere near beating the game so I wasn't able to explore the entire world so I know there's areas that I'm missing that are probably equal to or even more visually stunning than what I'm showing here um, I do plan to make some more videos in this game in the future but it is just it's hard to believe that Ubisoft was able to take the snowdrop engine and build an open world like this I'd always you know, I had seen uh, The Division 2, never played it, but seen it and knew it was a very beautiful game, very good looking game. But I had no idea that that engine could, could accomplish something like this, something with this level of fidelity. It's truly impressive. And <clears throat> like I said, number two on the list, it's the best looking game of 2023. Um, I know Alan Wake is stunning, but Alan Wake compared to this is extremely simple. It's linear. Uh, very small environments, um, very curated. The gameplay is much more simplistic, a lot less going on, a lot less enemies, a lot less scale, uh, and so on. This Avatar game is a massive, massive open world game, and so much stuff can happen between encounters with the wildlife in the jungles and in the wilderness to enemies and, you know... Drop ships will come and drop enemies randomly throughout the world, and there's just so much going on. And for it to have the level of fidelity that it does and maintain that, even as you're going through gameplay and in combat and stuff, the, the visuals never go down. You know, it's, it's really impressive. <clears throat> it continues to impress. Every time I fire it up, I'm amazed that it looks this good, even though I've played a bunch of time in it. It... it kind of like re-amazes me every time I, I start the game up and that's that says a lot about what kind of game it is um, if you haven't played it if you love visuals this game will not disappoint kind of like a Far Cry game so it has that kind of gameplay loop a little bit different but similar idea to like a Far Cry but much better looking number one Red Dead Redemption 2 now, some people may argue this. Some people will think it's uh, blasphemy that I would choose Red Dead Redemption 2 as the best-looking game in 2024. I mean, this game is going on six years old. <clears throat> Rockstar uh, famously spent over $350 million developing this game, which back then was a unbelievable budget. And... You can literally see the money on the screen. I mean, the the amount of detail in the world in Red Dead Redemption 2 is second to nothing. There, there's still, five plus years later, nothing that has the entire graphical package that Red Dead has. There are games that have better textures maybe, but they don't have textures, lighting, and uh, character models. 
they might have better character models, but they don't have better lighting and better textures. Or the whole complete package of Red Dead 2 is still the most impressive visual experience in gaming. Um, if you have a powerful PC and you can crank up the settings, I do mod Red Dead, but there is no graphics mods in this footage. This is completely vanilla graphics. This is what the game looks like from Rockstar. I haven't done anything to alter the the, <clears throat> the visuals at all. Um, I run mods that are like survival mods and stuff where you have to eat more often and maintain your health uh, more, drink water, things like that. Like It's more like a survival game, but nothing to affect the visual fidelity of the game. I want something to come along and take Rockstar, take Red Dead 2 off the top of this list. I'm waiting for it because I love visuals. I love video game graphics. They are simply my favorite thing about video games is the visual fidelity, the graphics. There's nothing I enjoy more. So I want something to come along after almost six years, five and a half years, however long it's been, and take Red Dead off the top of this list. But right now, in early 2024, there still is nothing that can do it. Nothing has the full, like the the volumetrics in Red Dead and the lighting. This game doesn't even have ray tracing. It doesn't even have ray tracing. That's, that's one of the craziest things. It has better lighting and lighting effects than most games with like top tier ray tracing can even boast. The textures are incredible. If you go anywhere in the world and go into photo mode and look straight down at the ground and zoom up to where you're about six, seven feet up in the air, it's some of the most realistic looking ground textures you've ever seen in a game. It, everything about the game. There's so much polish. Nobody makes games like Rockstar. Nobody puts the level of immersion into their games that Rockstar does. And even Grand Theft Auto V, now it's old now, it's over 10 years old, but if you go into Grand Theft Auto V and just explore the world in story mode, the amount of details are off the charts. And Red Dead 2 takes that to a whole nother level. It's it's more based on that. It's it's going for hyper realism, but at the same time, it has that rock star, slightly cartoony twist. Just just a little bit. I mean, it is going for true reality, but there is just a small small touch of like a cartoony uh, look on it. Um, some of the character models for NPCs. That's another thing about Red Dead. The character models, the detail is phenomenal. And even even NPCs that are just randomly spawned NPCs, the detail is through the roof. And on Arthur and all the main characters, the, the texture quality. I mean, there's just... I could go on all day about Red Dead. It's my favorite game that was ever made. I'm head over heels in love with it. I've posted tons of videos of it. I can't get enough of it. It's an extremely hard game to capture for, for a video like this, because everything you do is amazing. The footage is all good. It's not hard to capture because it's hard to make it look good. It's hard to capture because everything looks so good. You're not sure what to show. You know, what do I, what do I show off to show the visuals of this game? Everything about it is mind blowing. Like it looks at times hyper realistic. Like right now, it's Arthur standing at the bar, it looks almost like real life. It's just, it, it, I, I'm sorry. I get a little excited when I talk about Red Dead. It is my favorite game of all time. And I, I do believe it is the most complete and polished video game that's ever been made. Um, so yeah, that's my list, guys. That's the top 10 games of 2024 for PC. Um, like I said, most of these games are on console. There's a few on there that are that are only on PC, like DCS and Ready or Not. Although there are rumors that Ready or Not is coming to console sometime in 2024. We'll wait and see if that actually is true. But um, I hope you enjoyed this list. I'm going to be making more videos like this. I'm going to do a lot more uh, videos where we look at some different things, uh, have some ideas in the works. I hope you guys will 
uh, come back and check out some of those videos. I think the next the next couple of weeks here are going to be exciting with some of the ideas that I have and um, <clears throat> hope you guys will subscribe and uh, like the videos, support my channel. I'm trying to get the channel uh, going and be able to bring more content like this uh, and hopefully even better content in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, thanks for, for joining me for this very long journey and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot guys.